today is a good day. Today is a very good day. And if we can make it there, it will be a better day. So I'm on the Boomcat 125 right now. Um, and I have a tire around <laughs> my belly. Um, because I have my Boomcat and all of the parts that I have taken off of it and changed with it in my backpack and on my person. Because um, I am driving like an hour and 10, hour and 20 minutes away to trade our little boom cat for a TW200, my dream motorcycle. I found a good deal on Facebook Marketplace yesterday and then I just had to jump on it. So I messaged the guy and said, hey, look, I have this bike. Do you want to trade for it? Um, it's a 1989 TW200. I haven't seen it in person yet. I'm going to go check it out. Um, it needs rear brakes and it needs, um, I believe it, it has some cosmetic stuff as well on top of that, which is not a big deal. I don't care about cosmetic stuff. And uh, it only needs rear, rear uh, brake pads for the drums. Um, to my understanding, I'm going to check it out, obviously ride it and tell you guys how it is and, you know, we'll go for a ride together on the test drive. Um, but I am so happy to be uh, acquiring a motorcycle that I have wanted for so long now, a bike that is so cool, and to uh, kind of close the chapter on the Boom 125. Right. So I need to go down through... Long Beach, I believe. No, for no problem. We are just breaking the law at this point. There's lane splitting and then there's just literally just driving on the other side of the road. I'm sorry. <laughs> it would be nice to have a five-speed gearbox. I've never actually even seen a TW200 in person before. 89 is pretty old. That's that's older than I am. <laughs> this bike was made, let's see, one, two, three, three, three or four years before I was even born. <laughs> this will be my third motorcycle. That's pretty crazy. You know what's crazy is in Grand Theft Auto, I live in San Pedro. <laughs> And then in real life, I live in San Pedro. And then in Grand Theft Auto, pretty much my entire garage is all motorcycles. And then in real life, my garage only has motorcycles.
what you want Let's have a bit of fun till I downfall My love, if you feel like I do right now Don't say you're on the run to the other side My love You say you wanna try But you never do Sugar, there's a reason why we live so silly. All right. Yesterday didn't go so good. I drove an hour and a half each direction to get to this guy's house. Okay? So I get to his house and uh, I pull up and I like go past his house so I, I like turn around and he was starting to come outside. And then uh, so I turn around and then I pull into his driveway, okay? Gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful, unbelievably nice house. He's got like three or four motorcycles out front, two brand new cars, um, just just a gorgeous, beautiful house. Um, and on the phone, he was before I got there, he was talking about how he is sending another one of his bikes to the shop to have some work done on it. And he's talking about how many bikes he has and all this stuff. Okay. I said, all right, you know, it was, it was irrelevant to the conversation, so I was like, oh, okay. Anywho, I digress. So I get to the guy's house, um, he comes outside, and so I pull up, I pull in the driveway, I'm taking my helmet and my headphones out, you know, I'm taking my helmet off and my headphones out, and I was like, hey man, what's going on? The guy doesn't shake my hand, you know, like, like, I like, after I get my helmet off, I like go to shake his hand. I'm all excited. I'm like, hey, what's up? Oh yeah, it was a long ride, you know. But it was, it was a nice ride. So I'm not gonna lie, it was a nice ride. It was enjoyable. I was very excited. And uh, so the guy instantly starts complaining. Literally, the first words out of this guy's mouth is complaint about my bike. Now, this man has had multiple pictures, and I'm not talking three or four. I, when I sell something, I sell something as professional and as uh, up and up as humanly possible. This guy knows the work that I've done to it, the problems that I've faced. He's seen pictures of every square inch of this bike, as well as everything I've replaced and fixed. He's seen pictures from the first day I purchased this motorcycle. He, I sent him three detailed videos. Almost, all, I think all of them were around three or four minutes long each, going over every single meticulous detail of this bike. When I sell a vehicle, that's what I do. Because I hold myself to a higher standard and I want the person who's buying it to know everything there is about it. I don't want there to be mystery because when I buy a new vehicle there's all kinds of mystery and it's annoying and you have to track it down and that sucks. When somebody buys something from me I want them to be happy about their purchase not be like oh I found this this and this wrong I wish I didn't buy it. So this this 
guy knows what this bike is, okay? He knows that it's a smaller bike. He instantly starts complaining about how small the bike is. He, say, he says, oh, it's, it's, it's so small, it's so small. And I'm like, yeah, it's, <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a Boom Cat 125. It's a 125cc Cafe Racer. It's not a Goldwing. What are you talking about? It's small. You know what this bike is. He says, oh yeah, brother, but I didn't know. I didn't know it was so small. I didn't know it was so small. I said, well, that's on you. That's your problem to not know it. Not mine. You should have done your research. And, and I sent him more material than he would ever need. But guys, I'm telling you, like 40 pictures and, 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 and videos, like there's no way this guy didn't know it was a small bike. And if he legitimately didn't know it was a small bike, he's an idiot. At this point, our deal had already been done. We had already agreed on a price that worked for both of us. I was going to trade him my bike, which is a 2019 Boomcat 125 with a bunch of modifications and upgrades to fix the problems that are pretty common with these stupid bikes. Um, and $700 cash on top of it. So that's a motorcycle that's worth around $1,200 and $700 cash on top of it. For a 1989 uh, CW200 with 4,000 miles on it, it needs some work. Um, but I feel like that's a really fair trade. We, we agreed, we agreed on this deal. There's been no confusion of the deal. There's no point to even barter. There's no point to even wheel and deal at this point. The deal has already been decided. I'm there to sign the paperwork and pick up my bike and drop off this bike. This deal is done. So this guy starts backing out of the deal. He says, oh brother, I, there's no way I can sell this. There's no way I can sell this. I said, what are you talking about? Because I said, um, all right, well, if it's too small for you, you can resell these like nothing. And he says, there's no way I can sell this. And I'm like, what are you even talking about? This bike has had the work done to it for problems that are common in these stupid bikes. It's already fixed. This thing will go forever and just take good care of it. And then, and then I say, this would be such an easy sell to a new rider. He says, oh, what, what? Am I gonna sell it for 500 bucks? I sell this bike for 500 bucks, I make nothing. I said, why on God's good earth would you sell this bike for $500? That's unbelievably stupid. That's a stupid way to sell motorcycles. He says, all right, then you sell the motorcycle and you come back to me with the cash. And I said, no, no, that's not the deal we decided on. That's, he's like, oh yeah, but brother, I can't sell this bike. I can't sell that. I can't, this is no value to me. And I said, well, that's too bad. That's your problem because you already agreed to this deal. And I said, I'm leaving this bike here and I'm taking that bike. Keep in mind that this TW needs some work. And when I got there, it's in a lot rougher condition than what I, what I thought. And he goes, he goes, uh, listen, I got people calling day and night about this bike. I got all kinds of people calling day and night to come by my TW, uh, 20, TW200. I can, I can sell this at any time. This, this, I can't sell this. Keep in mind, this guy, you know, Rolex on the wrist, bunch of bikes in his yard, beautiful neighborhood. I'm not judging, you know, like, you know, I'm not judging him by that setting the scenario of this man is does not need to sell this bike today or he's going to be out of a home like they're doing fine he says yeah and i and i say to him i said look your bike is i which at this point i haven't even really gotten a chance to look at the bike i'm just standing like over there away from it because he like tucked it behind his pickup truck and and so i i barely get to even look at the bike and i can tell you this bike is ready to go. That bike needs some work. I'm gonna drive it home and drive it right to my garage and start working on it. This one, I've already paid my dues with working on it and it's good to go. So this guy starts complaining about how he can't sell it, how it's worthless and 
and I should sell it for him and then come back with the cash and and uh, all this stuff he says well if you sell this bike and come back with the cash I'll hold it for you they, you, you have my word as a man and I said uh, your word as a man I said I already had your word as a man when we agreed to this deal and have a verbal and text agreement that we are this is the deal I said you have no honor you have no honor as a man your word means nothing and I freaked out I lost my patience I actually like guys I, I actually I actually lost my patience yeah, I've been dealing I've been dealing with a lot of unbelievably unfathomable horrible things these past few months um, but if, if this is your first video that you're watching from me my best friend who we were raised together like we were brothers um, you know that kid that just shows up in your house because he doesn't have parents and then just becomes your brother that that was that was Casey and he, he um, we have a lifetime together being raised as brothers and uh, three weeks ago he shot himself in the head and killed himself a week before he was supposed to move to Los Angeles and come out here with me and, and live and start a new life with me here in Los Angeles um, and then I got a bunch of other horrible stuff going on uh, that, I, that I can't really talk about that, that's just like like one of these things is unfathomable and then add like four of these unfathomable things on top of every single waking second of your life um so i was like cool you know like a little sunshine on things i finally got this stupid bike running i got you know i you, tw 200 is like a, a dream bike like this is so exciting finally some good news finally something goes right we got into this huge fight and he goes he goes well let me give you let me give you gas brother he says i'm not hurting for cash because I, I said i have the 700 dollars in my pocket I was like, I'm leaving this bike here, $700. He says, well, I'm not hurting for cash, so let me give you a few dollars for, for gas because you drove all the way up here. This guy shoves like $3 in my face. <laughs> so instead of sticking to the deal, he's got this fat wallet filled with cash. And he gives me, he gives me $3 for my troubles. And I said, I, I, don't, I don't want your point your three dollars discover the earth awful awful idiot so the life lesson is if you are going to agree to something agree to something if you're going to back out of something don't agree to something in the first place even if it hurts someone's feelings say it's a, a deal that's not for you ahead of time do your research with things and be well versed and well knowledgeable in the, in the dealings that you deal with approach your business dealings with honor and stand up tall and be proud of what you sell don't be a stupid used car salesman and lie about things or whatever. Approach deals with honor. 